Check out this Halloween prop I just made. It only took me two days to make this stockade. And best of all, it's only made with two by fours. With the exception of the skeleton, of course. So, watch my video. I'll show you how you can make this really cool Halloween stockade with a skeleton stuck inside it. I have a skeleton clamped to my bench. And this way I can mimic the position that the skeleton will be in when he is in the stockade. And it'll also allow me to make, take measurements and make sure everything is in alignment. And let me reposition the camera and I'll show you what I mean. When you have your skeleton clamped to your workbench, now you can uh, easily check for alignment and measurements. And you'll notice that uh, the alignment of the radius bones and your neck bone need to be in alignment. And you can see here that when I position the camera, that the two bones are in alignment. That's important because when you make your neck and arm clamps, you can position them right where you need it to be, and then you can draw your holes in the proper position. Also, I'll be making my stockade uh, with, a, with a support plateau platform, and I'll be using two two by fours, and then measure the distance from the uh, top of the two by fours to the middle of the arm you can see it's in between the 27 and 28 inches so that'll help me when i uh, start making the platform i'll know the distance i need to uh, go to uh, make the uh, arm clamps i brought over my vertical support board temporarily just so i can get an idea of where the middle of this bone is and uh, so i drew a line right here across the board yeah, the middle of this bone and it turns out to be exactly almost 27 inches in length and okay, once i establish that that line right there then i can bring a scrap piece of four two by four and draw a line underneath there and then i'll know uh, where i can cut from remove this amount of wood from the uh, middle support board one of them and this vertical support tower is going to be uh, like a sandwich. I'll have two outer boards and this middle board. This middle board will be cut down to here. So then the bottom arm and neck support will be right here. And then I'll slide down the other 2x4 to, to enclose the, uh, the arm and the neck with the upper 2x4. And I've decided to go ahead and make this, uh, this whole vertical support tower to be about 36 inches in length. So I'll be cutting, so the outer boards will be cut at 36 inches. Made a dry run here, just make sure everything fits properly, everything's aligned. I uh, just have it clamped up right now. I haven't glued or fastened anything yet. I uh, still have to cut the holes for the arm and the neck, neck and finish making the, uh, the platform that the uh, pedestals will be sitting on. So I'll take it back apart and I'll show you how I put it together. Have the drill press all set to drill the holes for the neck and the arms. Have a two and seven eighths inch Forstner bit to drill the neck and I'll have a one and a half inch for the arms. I have the piece clamped to the table so I won't have any spin out. I have a backer board underneath and I'll be uh, running this at about 700 RPMs. Okay, the stockade clamps with the neck and arms look like they're a good fit. stockade clamps with a neck and arm look like they're a good fit. stockade temporarily set up on my bench 
and I have it square to the table. And between the two columns is, is almost exactly 18 inches. I want to put a stable horizontal stabilizing board in between the two columns just to keep them built from rocking back and forth on each other. Yeah. So I want to uh, use a two by four and, and cut a wedge inside the middle portion of the column so I can <clears throat> place the, the stabilizing board in between the two columns. And so the, the two columns are 18 inches apart. I'm gonna cut this board to eight to 20 inches so I'll be have an insert in each column about one inch. I'm gonna be using a Forstner bit, one and a half inch Forstner bit to drill a hole in here and then clean up the uh, clean up the hole with a chisel. I wanted to use a bandsaw to to cut the wedge, but mm, I glued them together, so I can't use the bandsaw now. And it would probably been easier with bandsaw, but with the uh, Forstner bit, with the Forstner bit, we'll be able to uh, uh, drill the hole too. Set the depth gauge on the drill press to one inch, to right where this line is. Now we just have to clean out the middle part of the board here all the way across so a two by four can fit in the hole. bit did a really really good job of <clears throat> hollowing out that that wedge hole and now I just have to go back and clean it up with a chisel and do the other column. I didn't show you how I made the platform for the stockade but I just used two two by fours and I screwed them in from the bottom and about 21 inches long and I did cut a 45 degree cut here on the top of the top board. I'll be using Two 45 degree support arms uh, to support the columns, and these are about eight inches long. I did start to deface the, uh, the boards, um, and the way I did that was with a uh, head of a nail with a hammer, and I also did some dents. I used a hatchet to make some marks on here, and also used a, a drill bit here to drill the little wormholes. The two colors I'm going to be using are, are going to be a dark, it's going to give it like an antique look, old look, and I'm using a uh, cherry and a walnut. I'll just mix those up when I stain the uh, stockade. Now it's time to uh, attach the stabilizing boards. So I glued both ends and both of the holes that, that, that the uh, board will slip in. Okay, after using my rubber mallet to make sure it's in uh, fully in place, I want to check to make sure that it's square to the uh, columns. And you can see that uh, pretty much is. I may have to turn it a little bit more that way right there. Yeah, that'll do it. That was, there you go. I'm gonna fill the screw hole with a uh, plug. I had these round plugs, but I don't think the round ones would really fit with the decor. So I took these over to the uh, sander and uh, sanded out the tops. And now I'll be able to glue these guys in. I think that will look uh, a little better than the round ones. Finish printing this. We have walnut, cherry, mahogany stain on the uh, stockade. It really gives it a nice weathered, beaten down look, especially with the distressed wood here. And now, I just want to add the last special effect is putting some wood stain, some blood stain right around where the hands and the neck go. And what I did was I mixed up some red paint with, uh, with that brown and mahogany varnish. Let it blend in real quick. Let's see what we can do with this right here now.
that should do it.